What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Less than a couple of weeks away from the start of Razorback football. Other teams obviously are playing. It hasn't been a whole lot of real exciting games just yet. Not a whole lot for next week either, but uh, the Razorbacks will be playing Georgia in less than two weeks, and SEC play picks up, so it should be an exciting time here coming up. We're going to talk about that, of course, football like we always do. Danny West is also going to join us. Your questions as well. All that and more on Hogsports Live. Before we get started, I want to take a moment, of course, to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already and uh, also interact with the video, share the video, like it, all that kind of stuff helps uh, or all that engagement helps uh, the algorithm boost our channel up. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the page and hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos on YouTube and also interact with there, share. Uh, also, I'm available on Apple Podcasts. On Apple Podcasts, you got to scroll all the way down if you're subscribed to leave us a five-star rating and also leave us a review. Say something nice about the show if you like it. Recommend to other people as well. All that grassroots stuff helps a lot. Uh, also, I want to mention this. If you First of all, we had great response with our uh, special offer. We did a two months for $1 last week, and we sold more subscriptions than anybody in the network. We were behind Georgia. We had a huge surge there that last day, so I appreciate all you guys for uh, jumping up and uh, and subscribing on that. It was a great deal, obviously, two months for a dollar. I know that there are a lot of you out there that maybe still aren't convinced, and, and we do also create free content. The way we kind of do our content, we do VIP and free. VIP stuff is stuff that's more research, more stuff we spend a whole lot of time on, stuff that you can't just get out of a press conference or a release or something like that, you know, stuff that's about to happen, stuff that we project are going to happen, recruiting coverage, stuff like that. So that's more of our VIP type stuff. Our free stuff, on the other hand, is stuff that maybe does come out of a football practice or maybe you can maybe get that stuff elsewhere, but – um, we certainly put a lot of effort into that. So, you know, we're, we're a dual revenue uh, company. So if you want our free content, then it's a great idea to sign up for our newsletter. You get daily breaking news, uh, regular content delivered right to your email inbox. Most all of it's free. They probably, probably put like eight stories in there every morning, roughly on average, uh, and probably six of them, maybe sometimes seven, but probably about six of them will put uh, free articles. So you can keep up with the Razorbacks that way. It's easy to sign up. You just go to hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com, scroll to the middle of the page, and you'll see where it says enter email. So you just enter your email and hit sign up and then you get an activation email and you click it and you, you're all set and you can cancel that at any time but uh, that's a great way to keep up with things get daily morning emails i usually send them off about nine o'clock and then also whenever there's breaking news items we send uh, a uh, breaking news email so it's a good way to keep up if you're interested in that all right everybody i want to thank you for joining me today appreciate all you listeners subscribers watching non-subscribers before we get started, I want to um, I want to mention John Daly, diagnosed with bladder cancer. Really unfortunate. He has had surgery already, and uh, I believe they got it. But there's an 85 percent chance that it'll return, according to Daly. So he'll have to go back in three months, and they may have to cut again. So thoughts and prayers certainly with John Daly and his family. Great Razorback. So moving on to college football last weekend I mean there were some there were some okay games right I mean we had the Miami UAB game on Thursday Clemson Wake Forest that was all Clemson Uh, some of you may have been paying attention this is a pay-per-view game but Oklahoma and Missouri State Missouri State because of Bobby Petrino his first year as coach there they got waxed 48 and nothing by Oklahoma so they got it handed to them I thought this was an interesting because Notre Dame ranked number 10 against Duke you know is Arkansas better than Duke How do you look at Arkansas compared to Duke? Uh, Notre Dame beat them 27-13. So this was the week last week that Arkansas would have played Notre Dame. Texas with a blowout win. North Carolina with a handy win. Uh, Iowa State lost to Louisiana Lafayette 31-14. 31-14. Iowa State was ranked 23rd in the country. So that's super disappointing for them. Only scored in the second quarter, two touchdowns in the second quarter. West Virginia won. Arkansas State stunned Kansas State. Arkansas State is 1-1 now. 35-31 win over K-State. Had a nice trick play in that game also. G5 
Jeff Trailer, Barry Lunny Jr., his offensive coordinator, they had a wild one against Texas State. They had the game pretty well in hand and ended up just getting uh, losing control of it. Texas State raced back, and then it went into overtime. Kicker missed an extra point, then missed a field goal for Texas State. And um, Jeff Trailer was able to pull out his first win as head coach on college level. So congratulations, Jeff Trailer. Always like Jeff Trailer. Certainly when, it, you know, you talk about who's at fault and everything for the things that went, you know, on at Arkansas, there are a few guys that don't make that list for me, and one of them is Jeff Trailer, another is Barry Lunny Jr. Man, Florida State lost to Georgia Tech. So, of course, Florida State struggles anyway. I mean, they've been struggling, right? But they lost to Georgia Tech, and, and the kicker of that one is Jeff Sims is quarterback. He's a 2019 dual-threat quarterback, 6'3", 205, four-star, who was committed to Florida State and then decommitted in December of 2019. No, excuse me, 2020 class. <clears throat> He's just a true freshman. Uh, decommitted, I guess probably after Kendall Bryles left, um, and committed to Georgia Tech and then beat Florida State. People are already like, fire Norvell. I don't know about that. Louisville beat Western Kentucky. Texas Tech edged Houston Baptist. Barely. Kansas lost to Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina gave Arkansas a scare a few years ago. Brett Bielma's last year, if you remember. T.J. Hammonds went wild. So those are some some of the games from this last weekend. If you fast forward, uh, what are we, week three? Houston, Memphis, Oklahoma State, Tulsa. What else we got? Syracuse, Pitt. One's a jump out. Baylor, Houston, South Florida, Notre Dame. UCF, Georgia Tech. Not a lot of great ones next weekend either. I mean, it really kicks into high gear after that. So Miami, Louisville would probably be the biggest game. 6.30 Central Time on ABC, Miami, Louisville. That's 17 Miami versus 18 Louisville. That's your game right there. Virginia, Virginia Tech. That'll. I mean, that's... Oh, no, excuse me. Postpone. Never mind. So, yeah, the game you want to see is uh, Virginia, Virginia. Or, excuse me. <laughs> the game you want to see is Miami-Louisville at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. Another player, another key player has opted out. Jamon Osmond, uh, a Texas A&M wide receiver. He had 66 catches for him last year. He's going to just focus on the NFL draft. So, there's a lot of the players that have, have – opted out. I mean, there's like 50 around the country in college football. Osmond is the latest one. Jamar Chase, of course, that was a big one for LSU. I mean, the guy had like 86 receptions or something. There's 10 players from UCF. Let's see who else. Uh, Kerry Vincent from LSU, cornerback. Vanderbilt has a ton of players that have opted out, obviously. Like six players. I think that may be most of the notable ones. Maryland's had a lot. Most of the notable ones that, that you know, are in the SEC. Auburn, Chandler Wooten, linebacker there. So Arkansas so far has not been hit hard by this. And it's probably because a lot of them, you know, are trying to increase their draft stock. I think like Osmond, you know, he's not a first or second rounder right now, but he's, he's going to get drafted. So I think a lot of that plays a role. You don't see freshmen really – like true freshmen, they're not opting out. Um, so it's because they want to they, – they have a lot to prove still. I think that's the bottom line. But for Arkansas, you don't have a lot of guys like, yeah, that guy's definitely going pro. There's a lot of guys that are trying to prove that they belong in that conversation to go pro. New AP Top 25 is out and coaches. Tennessee's all the way up to 15. All the teams like Ohio State, you know, they're not in there now. They were in the uh, uh, preseason poll. But Clemson 1, Alabama 2, Oklahoma 3, Georgia 4, Florida 5, LSU 6, Notre Dame 7, Auburn 8, Texas 9, and Texas A&M 10. So Arkansas right now plays A&M, Auburn, LSU, Florida, Georgia, Alabama. <laughs> they play six of the top ten teams in the country. Yep. So Arkansas has a plan just two weeks out for the opener. A little under two weeks, obviously. Game's Saturday. So they will go – this week they practice 
Let's see here. They practice Monday, so they practice today. We'll have a media, media availability Tuesday and Wednesday, okay? And they'll be focused just on Arkansas, trying to get better as a team, finalizing things. Wednesday they're going to have – I believe they'll have a starting lineup on the on the offensive line. We'll talk about that here in a second. But um, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday practice. Thursday they'll be off. We'll have availability to watch practice on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday's just Sam Pittman's radio show. Thursday they're off. Friday they're going to jump into Georgia. So Friday will be like a normal Tuesday type of practice on Friday, I guess. Sam said it'll be a Monday. I don't know if he was just mixed his days up because he's like. The way it works out is Friday, because Saturday, he said Saturday will be like a Tuesday practice, but Saturday's a mock game. So I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense. And then Monday will be like a Tuesday, which is Tuesday's your grind day. Tuesday will be like a Wednesday. Wednesday's a grind day, but it's, you know, you expect to have more perfection. And then Wednesday will be like a Thursday, which Thursday is your polish day. You expect, you know, you don't want to have any balls on the ground, everything very clean, everybody knowing what they're supposed to do. And then Thursday will be like another Thursday. So they have basically Thursday, Thursday. And then Friday will be a walkthrough, and Saturday's your game. So that's the plan moving forward. They'll finalize what they feel like is their depth chart. Of course, they, they're going to want to have that for Saturday's mock game. It's a good question. Will Arkansas find stability at quarterback in 2020? Now, hold your breath <laughs> for a second. Arkansas has started the last two years eight different quarterbacks. Arkansas has started eight different quarterbacks in the last two years. Will they get away this year with just starting one? It's possible. So the last two years you've had Ben Hicks. Just, the la just last year you had five. So – in 2019, yeah, 20, 2018, you had Cole Kelly, Ty Story, and Connor Nolan. Three quarterbacks started for you. In 2019, you had Ben Hicks, Nick Starkle, John Stephen Jones, K.J. Jefferson, and Jack Lindsey. So, assuming strongly that Felipe Frank starts, he will be the ninth starting quarterback over the last three seasons for Arkansas. There's no way you can paint that positively. It's it's ba it's just bad. There's no there's no good about that. So we mentioned the offensive line starting to take shape, and it is. Uh, I think the one thing that's maybe a little bit different since my last depth chart came out, I kind of had Brady Latham like penciled in as a backup at a lot of spots because he's worked basically at, at all four start spots except for center. Uh, but right now, I would probably pencil him in as the starter at left guard. It does sound pretty strong that he is one of their top five offensive linemen, according to Sam Pittman. So left tackle, Myron Cunningham, left guard, probably going to be Brady Latham. Also, you got Luke Jones. You've got Ty Clary, um, Shane Clennon. All those guys are working there. But it looking more and more like it's going to be Brady Latham. And this is a guy that we've talked about for a while. I mean, last year, even last August – uh, this uh, 2019 August, there were a lot of people saying that, you know, watch out for Brady Latham once he gets bigger, once he gets stronger. And, and Pittman says he still needs to get bigger. But, you know, even going back to walkthroughs, we heard that Brady Latham was running with the first group. And then, I believe, at right tackle, which is a position he's also worked. But looking like he's maybe going to fit in at left guard. I think it's just finding the right the right mix, the right who's going who's gonna to be where. I mean, it, it's one thing to say, yeah, these are our top five. We want to get our top fives in there. But, you know, is Noah Gatlin or Dalton Wagner a guard? You know, they may be both in the top five. But they got to play tackle. I mean, Wagner's 6'9". Of course, they put, they put Dan Skipper at guard at 6'10 one year. So, anyway, center, Ricky Stromberg. Right guard is uh, Bo Lemmer and right tackle, Dalton Wagner or Noah Gatlin. I think that will be it might be a battle that continues on. I think it'll be Noah Gatlin when everything's said and done, but it wouldn't surprise me if the starter coming out of the gate is Dalton Wagner. It's a lot of good content this week on all that kind of stuff at Hogsports, H A W G Sports.com. It's just one dollar right now for one month. We were doing a one dollar for two months. One dollar for one month is still pretty darn good. Curtis Wilkerson has a good article just about Arkansas's transfers and how important they are to the team's success. And if you look at it, I mean there's a chance I think they've really upgraded with all those guys. 
right? So, but if you look at it, it starts with Felipe Franks, grad transfer quarterback. Obviously, it looks like that's going to be a step up. Even if he's, again, just an average quarterback in the SEC, it's still a pretty good step up from what they did last year and the year before that. And the year before that. It's been three years. been pretty rough. So, it starts with him. And then if you want to branch off, off of that, I mean, A.J. Reed at kicker is going to be pretty big. George Caratan at punter is going to be pretty big. Special teams, I mean, you want to, Arkansas went from, like in 2018, they were just atrocious on special teams, especially especially in the punt game. They were, they were really bad. And then you fast forward to uh, 2019, and aside from that, like, chess pass that was interception, it was ridiculous against Auburn, aside from that play, they really didn't hurt themselves on special teams. They may not have had a lot of positives aside from a couple of trailing Burks runs, but they really didn't hurt themselves that bad. So, but they weren't a weapon. So the hope has got to be this year with Scott Fountain, with all this dedicated, you know, dedicated special teams coach and all that stuff. The hope has got to be that you at least are a weapon this year. You at least have some plays where maybe it puts you in a position to win a game or helps your defense in a big way or and, you know something like that. So those two guys are going to be really big for Arkansas, I think. Um, you want to switch over to defense – or I guess you could switch – keep it on offense here. Uh, and Traylon Smith is not a grad transfer, but he's a transfer. And a lot's been expected out of him as the backup running back, a different kind of back, not quite as big as Raheem Boyd, shifty, spin moves. Um, I think a lot of us are really intrigued with what he might be able to bring to the table. So uh, he's a big one also. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you switch to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, if you want to count junior college players as transfers, technically Juco transfer, um, Julius Coates is going to possibly provide a really big impact. He's probably been one of the most talked about guys on the team since he arrived uh, and definitely during fall camp as well. But he's most likely going to be your starter at, uh, at probably the right end spot. Um, so him, and then you've got Xavier Kelly, the transfer from Clemson, looking like he's going to start at defensive tackle. Uh, Levi Draper, right now probably in the second group at linebacker. Uh, Jerry Jacobs has really been a starter at left corner or field corner, depending on how they are able to do it. Uh, since, I mean, since he arrived, it feels like he's been – starting at left corner. So uh, he's another big one. So there's a lot of key players on this defense who are transfers in who I think really have boosted the program. And they could all come back again next year if they wanted. They all get next year back if they want it. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Danny West. For those who aren't familiar with Danny, what are you doing? He's the best recruiting guy in the state of Arkansas. He's been doing it for well over a decade now. Does a great job for us. Most of his stuff is VIP, so when we're talking about reasons to sign up for VIP, if you want to read Danny West recruiting breakdowns, then he's the guy for that. Also recently welcomed down a new baby girl, Mason. Trey Biddick. What's up, Danny? How you doing? What's going on, man? I'm good. Doing a little Get bit. Some things in order for uh, class of 2023 currently. Yeah, I saw that. So you had a couple of um, big red boards for position groups that you let out for the tw class of 2023 and class of, uh, or excuse me, for uh, quarterbacks 22. in 2023 and, and uh, 22. Oh, yeah. 2022. Okay, gotcha. So you're already jumping ahead to 2023 now and some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I guess uh, since I, I screwed that up, let's just go ahead and talk about the 2022 big red board. <laughs> um, anything that you can you can share with us that, without giving away the uh, everything. Yeah. You know, I think it. You start with the in-state class, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a really good class next year, and that's where uh, you have to begin. Uh, they've offered nine guys, right? And I think so far, Trey, I really feel like they're in a good spot with all of them. You know, a good spot, but a great spot with a few. Uh, obviously, you've already picked up two, and JJ Hollingsworth and uh, Dax Courtney. So, you know, you think about just quarterbacks alone. There's there's no uh, Sorry, I got a message here. There's no uh, in-state quarterback, but there is one at running back. James mm -hmm. Joyner, obviously, I've got him listed as hot right now and uh, feel pretty good about that. You know, Florida State's making it, making a strong push at him, I think, and they're doing a good job. James doesn't seem to be in any type of hurry, but, you know, I think Arkansas with uh, Jimmy Smith recruiting him, they've become really close, so he's definitely one that I've got my eye on. Uh, you know, when you think about the in-state crowd, but 
outside of that, you know, you think about the receiver spots, and I've got it coming later on. I, I just want to make mention, you know, Justin Stepp, here we are, his third real year here. Mm-hmm. And you think about the job he's done, Trey, to go yeah. out two years ago or the class of uh, 19 and bring in four star guys, one after the other, four of them. Four four stars, and then, yeah. of course, and now another. You know, he, he's up to eight now total. When you think about guys like Jaqueline Crawford, a former four star, I count him. Yeah. I count Rocket Sanders. He was he was the lead guy there. So, and now you've got Keytron Jackson coming in. So, who is that next Keytron Trey Knox out of state type guy that he goes out and gets next year? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's what it's going to come down to for me. Obviously, you've got two wide receivers here in the state. Isaiah Satania and uh, uh, Quincy McAdoo out of Clarendon. But who is that next guy going to be? It wouldn't surprise me if it's a kid over in Oklahoma, uh, Taylor and Shetron. He's out of uh, Santa Fe High School, out of Edmond, Oklahoma. A lot of talk there. I know Oklahoma is going to be really tough to beat for this guy. He's a four-star. Uh, the composite has him number 54 in the country, but one of the early guys to keep an eye on there. I think uh, I think he's feeling it. That being said, can you go in and beat Oklahoma for a guy like that, a wide receiver? We haven't seen that done very often. So mm-hmm. just a name to keep an eye on before the big red board hits later. Gotcha. Danny West joining us again from hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. That 2022 class, by the way, there's just three commitments, but it's, Arkansas has gotten a pretty good start. You mentioned Dax Courtney and J.J. Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth. Um, they also have Eli Henderson out of Duncan, South Carolina, an offensive lineman, to make it rank the number nine class in the entire country, actually. So it's a, a good, fast start for them. Obviously, to keep that ranking, you gotta you got to get some big-time four-star type recruits. Sure. Um in the 2021 class, Danny, I guess Arkansas is up to – what are they up to? Twenty? Are, they're up to 20, 20 if, you count, spots if you count Jaqueline Crawford, yeah, which you, right. you have to because he counts forward to that class. So uh, they're at 20, uh, number 22 ranked class in the country right now. So where do you think see things shaking out in terms of what position groups they need? I think you still look for an offensive lineman. If it's a guy that you feel really good about, maybe an Armand Bethea, a big kid out of New York. You know, he's 6'6", 330, whatever he might be. He's more of a bard, but I think he's in the mix still. Uh, Defensive line, I think you you feel good about Solomon Wright, right, a Mm -hmm. defensive tackle, but he is undersized. You know, he's 6'2", 285, whatever he might be, but I think uh, you're still involved for Cameron Ball, who was originally – you know, going to announce his commitment here in about a week or so, uh, mm-hmm. the 22nd, so next Tuesday. But he has since gone back on that, saying he's going to push it back. So, you know, I think that – I don't think it helps Arkansas or hurts. You know, I think the kid just wanted to take a little more time. But, obviously, uh, big joker out of Georgia, 6'5", 300. I think Georgia Tech or Arkansas, I still feel that way and have for a long time. So, uh, to answer your question, O line, D line, and Trey, I'd be tempted to save a few spots. I mean, mm-hmm. we talk all the time about linebacker and tight end, and 100%. I think I'd be willing to uh, to save a couple of spots, but probably try to wrap it up with a DB. Yeah. You know, uh, more of a versatile guy. That's how Barry Odom likes him. You know, I, I don't think he has to be necessarily a six two, two hundred pound safety. You know, if he can cover and play corner or nickel and and do a little bit of everything. That, that's the type of guy I would try to find with the with the uh, final spot there. Yeah, I think I would try to find a JUCO linebacker. <laughs> yeah, or, or find a transfer linebacker too. So, Danny, what did you do this past week? Did you catch any high school football games? I did. Uh, Friday night, I, I had it all set up here at the house, trying to play it safe. But you know, fortunately, so many more schools nowadays are starting to stream their games, so mm-hmm. it makes it easy for me to set up a a few monitors and sit here in the comforts of my own living room and keep up with some games. So I was able to do that as I bring up my notepad here, cause I'm getting old and I forget exactly who I saw, but uh, yeah, the, I watched the mall mail game. Obviously they've got a speak of 2022 in-state guys. There's two right there, right? Mm-hmm. Nico Davier, Andrew Chambly, a defensive lineman and an offensive lineman there. So enjoyed watching those guys. Nico really stood out to me. Trey, he's everything I, was hoping he would be. Andrew got a little bit banged up in that game, and I knew it as soon as it happened. Gabe Brooks and I were watching the game. 
uh, we both knew it as soon as he got rolled up on us that didn't look good mm. and sure enough he he got up and he really didn't look the same and that was pretty early on in the game so i'd like to revisit him again later in the year i'm used to watching his film mm. of him just you know punishing guys yeah. through the whistle you know, you know manhandling and he wasn't able to do that friday night and i understand why you know he's he strained his mcl is what he told me this morning so he's gonna He's going to miss a week, but he'll be back. That's, you know, that's the good news. Also it's just picked that. up, uh, he just picked that's up an works. Auburn offer. And uh, sounds like Ohio yeah. State might be close on him also. Yeah, yeah, he's big time. And i tell you what, he sure looks the part. He's one of the best looking um, uh, offensive line prospects that Arkansas has produced in a long time, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Uh, just on the hoof, you know, he's he's got it all. But Nico really stood out to me, Trey. Uh, he put him at quarterback. The short yardage stuff. It was just a lot of fun to watch that guy. He had three tackles on the first five plays of the game, I think. So I just kind of sat back with my popcorn and said, okay, mm-hmm. it's going to be one of these type of nights. Yeah. You know? And then I uh, also got a chance to watch JV and Hunt. Not much. Out of, uh, <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot yeah. going there. Yeah, 13 uh, carries for they... 27 yards, two <laughs> catches for minus six. I'll tell you what, his offensive line didn't give him a whole lot of room. And credit to Bell City. Um, from what I understand, I was talking to a reporter on Twitter from over there. I don't know the guy, but he was uh, helpful enough to give me the stats and kind of help me out a little bit on some things. But um, he was telling me Dell City's got like one of the top few defenses in that state. So mm-hmm. no surprise that they, they shut him down the way they did. Well, Danny, anything else you want to add while I got you here? Since the last time I talked to you, we've got uh, Javon Nelson, a 21 defensive end. Arkansas is in the top five there, so sticking around there. Uh, Cameron Sidney, we had a VIP on him last week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, his uh, father, you may remember his father, Shannon Sidney. Yeah. Ran around. track and, and played football for Arkansas. Yeah. And, um, Cam is a kid. They live out in California now. He came to camp last year. He got his offer. And uh, Arkansas is still on him, still sticking around there. So I'm not saying they're going out to California and going to sign this kid, but Keep an eye on Mr. Sydney there. I like that kid a lot. All right, Danny. Well, I'm going to let you go right, then. I know you got other things to keep you good. busy. <laughs> All right, man. You got it. We'll All right, see. that's Danny West with hogsports.com again. H-A-W-G sports.com uh, to read all of Danny's uh, information. All right. We are going to transition over to your questions now. I've got some questions over at Hog Sports. Always go to those guys first, my VIP people. Again, thanks to all those who have signed up. All right, what do we got here? Hog Slop 2011 wants to know, will the Hogs cover the spread against Georgia minus 24? I'm not... I have no idea what to expect. I mean, it would just be me. Your guess would be as good as mine on that. I mean, everything's been so limited. I think they're going to be better. If the line is based on the idea that Arkansas is the same as they were last year, then I think that Arkansas covers it. What the heck? I'll say Arkansas covers it. I mean, it's three and a half touchdowns. Mr. Pig says, what position do you feel Arkansas fans will be pleasantly surprised by how they perform? Which position do you think fans might be disappointed in based on preseason conceptions? I think that people will be pleasantly surprised with the secondary, with the defensive line. As far as being disappointed based on preseason thoughts, conceptions, maybe maybe we could say tight end because they have really struggled there. I know people thought, like, you've got Hudson. Um, I kind of think that they're, like I've said before, kind of manufacturing things to push him a little bit. But it's hard to say because people weren't just, like, super, like, didn't have, like, really positive preconceived (laughs) conceptions. Uh, preconceived notions about how a certain position group was going to be. But I think people will be surprised with um, offensive – or excuse me, defensive line in the secondary. I think they're actually uh, going to be able to compete decently with some people. Trey, do you think T.J. Hams has a productive year for the Hogs? I think that he will probably have his most productive year 
but it'll be at wide receiver. But he hasn't had like a really productive season yet. You know, he's had his moments here and there, but like in terms of being a consistent guy week after week, this is his best shot at at it. I think he's probably running your backup slot behind Traylon Burks. Probably going to be asked to do a lot of things that Burks does. And you know, uh, they they kind of give those guys all the same reps and stuff and practice just because they have to. So I will I will say that he has his most productive year and most consistent, like kind of week after week, you know, maybe he has a catch or makes a play or an end around or something like that. Rip Rip Euro says, is KJ's throwing ability improved under Browse? Uh I saw him throw one of the uglier passes I've seen him throw in practice one day, but he still looks like he's throwing it pretty good overall. The thing with him last year is he would sail him, uh, and that's because he was reworking his motion. He had a he had kind of a hitch instead of like bringing it like parallel. He was he was just kind of bringing it straight up like that, and just kind of kind of a almost like a shot put when he was in high school and when he first got to Arkansas, and they reworked his throwing motion and that's I think that's caused some it to be erratic at times he's got a lot more velocity than he did in high school there's no question he does um but that just takes it just takes time to rework it and you should rework it I mean there are a lot of guys there are guys that make it in college with poor throwing mechanics uh Danny Warfel is one of them but nobody in the NFL is nobody's got poor mechanics and is making it in the NFL so you need to rework it's in the guy's best interest Mr. Pig says, what are some realistic goals for Arkansas against Georgia? Everyone would hope for an upset, but what are the real what real targets can Arkansas shoot for in week one? I would say the first goal is to finish the game and and play it like you care. Um, that's number one. That's the first and end of it for me is f- show some fight, battle, act like you want to be there. Don't just get run out of the stadium after the first quarter or the first half. Show up and fight. Prove that you're willing to to go to bat for your coach, for yourself, for the state. All of those things that we've been talking about, making Arkansas proud of the football team again. All of those things, I would say that's the number one goal above anything else. And, of course, you know, there's boneheaded, just stupid stuff. A lot of that stuff happens in week one. But, you know, dropping punts, getting a punt blocked, getting a field goal blocked, um, you know, snapping the ball way over somebody's head, snaps that just kind of flutter back there are real inconsistent. You know, all of those things that you'd like to see shored up from last year or in the year before that, they didn't really drop punts last year, but uh, all of those things you don't want to see in the opener. You know, just a, a flute play that, you know, where guys aren't giving effort. What I want to see is, you know, people who are watching on TV, I'll be at the game, but people who are watching on TV, you need to see Razorbacks just like flying over the pile on defense. That's what you want to see, not not the pull up. He's got it. You don't want to see that. So to me, it's it's a lot about just energy, focus, acting like you want to be there. I've seen this team so many times just play like they couldn't care less about being there. That Missouri game two years ago to end the season, it's raining, it's kind of cold, we don't have anything to play for, and just getting waxed, embarrassed. Brady Mitchell says, with all these starter caliber players opting out of the season at SEC schools, what does that say about the job our staff has done with these guys' mentality? Oh, your name's, last name's pronounced Michael. Brady Michael, gotcha. So, Brady Michael. I w- again, I would go back to what I was saying about Arkansas. I think it's just a situation where you've got a lot of guys trying to play themselves into the draft, and you see players who are opting out. Mostly, there's some guys that have a reason, right? Um, a family member or something like that. I think Shamar Nash's grandmother um, was a victim of COVID. Uh, and uh, Chaboise and Juana has also opted out. I'm not sure what his reasoning is. It just that it wasn't released or anything. It was just came, you know, from the university. We asked about, you know, where he is. So those guys weren't really going to play a huge role anyway. But you do have other guys, you know, um, who we just talked about who are big contributors. But I think a lot of those guys see themselves in the NFL, getting drafted, and are just going to kind of protect it. 
Shivers45 says, Trey, do you think the, that a combination of Julius Coach, Dorian Gerald, Xavier Kelly, Jonathan Marshall ha can have the same kind of impact that Trey Flowers, Darius Phylon had when the defense was good? Their sizes are very similar, and I think that could impact and solve linebacker depth issues. So, it's early to say. The, the reviews on Julius Coates have been, have been outstanding so far. I mean, like, they're really impressed with him. Dorian Gerald, I know, can play. Xavier Kelly, there have been really positive things said about him. And Jonathan Marshall is a guy that I think should have started last year. I think they have a chance to be one of their better defensive lines in a while. I don't know if it'll be like Trey Flowers, Darius Phylon good, but it has a chance to be one of their better defensive lines in a while. Better than last year, I think. Even losing McTelvin and Game, I think it's going to be better than last year. A, lot, a big addition is Coates. And you also – I mean, it's not just about the starters because you're only as good as your second bunch in the in the SEC. Uh, you've got Matteo Soli coming back from last year who started all of last year as a freshman with a club on his hand. He's going to be back stronger, probably needs to continue to add some more weight. Zach Williams is back. They really love Eric Gregory. That's a guy that's not being talked about a lot, but they've been giving him, like, first-team rep opportunities. And they've also, from according to Pippen – I believe it was Pittman, it might have been Odom, but worked him at different positions. So, to me, that means working him at end and working him at defensive tackle. I mean, he goes 280-plus right now. So, Shivers45 says, Trey, name two players on offense and two on defense that you are most excited to see under the new coordinators of Browse and Odom. Um, Traylon Burks and Traylon Smith. I would say those two guys. Uh, I expect – Felipe Franks to be a quality enough quarterback. Again, if he's great, that's fantastic. If he's average, you'll take it. And that's kind of a long line where I've kind of set the bar of expectation. But I want to see what Traylon Smith does. I want to see if he can be a viable option behind Rakeem Boyd. And I want to see Traylon Burks because it sounds like they're going to really try to get him the ball. On defense, most excited. I want to see Julius Coach just because everybody's talking about him so much. And I want to see Jalen Catalan like, play an extensive amount because Chad Moore said he was one of the best five high school players he's ever seen. I want to see what he's talking about. And, you know, in practice, we often saw Jalen Catalan make a big play. Uh, people always talked about big plays he made in practice, but he didn't play, obviously, a lot last year. Hog Nation 9 says, where do Franks and Rakeem finish statistically in the SEC? Rakeem has a chance to finish very high. Obviously, he did last year with 1,100 yards. It's only 10 games this year, so you lose two games. And all the games, you know, you replace three relatively easy games with, you know, two really hard ones. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say. Like, if you want me to, like, say in a ranking order or something, I think Rakeem can still finish in the top five. He stays healthy throughout the season in rushing. Uh, Franks may be more of a mystery. But I think – I mean, he's got weapons at wide receiver. It's all about protection, right? I mean, that's something that Kendall Browse, if you listen to his latest uh, – or his last time – when he was on the Hog Podge, not his latest interview, but when he was on the Hog Podge, he's talking about, you know, last year with Florida State, how much he realized you can't just operate this offense. you got to have protection to really have great success because they gave up 48 sacks. Pro football focus ranked in the worst – second worst offensive line in college football last year. So, a lot depends on that offensive line. But we know Rakeem ran behind what I think was probably a worse offensive line than they'll have this year. You know, he had success, average 6.2 yards a carry. So, I still think that he will he will stay up there pretty well uh, in the SEC. And Franks is just – I mean, it's kind of your best as good as mine. But I think he's got some weapons. I think he can throw the ball. Can he get the protection he needs? Hoyo says – if I let you borrow my time machine to fix the mess that had has been Razorback football for the last decade plus, which date and time do you go back to correct things? I mean, I would go back to like 19, would it be 1930s when Paul Bear Bryant was there and I would convince everybody to hire him and make sure he gets there. The real word is he was hired as Arkansas's coach. Here's what I would do. Okay, so Bear Bryant allegedly was hired as Arkansas's coach. Uh, the day that Pearl Harbor uh, happened, then he went and enlisted in the military. So I guess I would go back and get a two-for-one, right? I would stop Pearl Harbor some kind of way, let everybody know, hey, this is coming. This attack is coming. You stop Pearl Harbor, and then maybe Bear Bryant's the Arkansas coach to save a lot of lives, change history. There you go. 
if you're talking about just in the last 10 years or so, 10 years, so that would take me back to 2010. I mean, obviously, maybe sit down and have a conversation with Bobby Petrino. <laughs> <laughs> about I think that's probably what I would do it's not like I wouldn't just like go stop motorcycle day and try to like uh help in the cover up I would I don't know probably I have no idea maybe send a counselor over to Bobby Petrino I have no idea but some kind of way stop the affair not just try to stop the crash I can't be a hypocrite now, that's not okay, right? So I would try to stop the affair. Maybe that would fix everything. Stop him from trying to hire Jessica Durrell, all that kind of stuff. Your your suggestions are convincing not to keep Malzon. I would have probably tried to stop Broyles from ever hiring Malzon in the first place. That marriage just did not work. That was forced. Anytime a coach gets something forced on him, it's the beginning of the end. Motorcycle day. Bielema's personal problems. Hiring anyone else over Chad. Or other. I mean, all those are probably decent. All right, let's see if we got any more questions from our membership here. A couple more. With so many connections to Georgia and the staff and the amount of talent that comes from that state, is Georgia a pipeline on the line? Is, is a Georgia pipeline on the line in terms of recruiting in two weeks? Well, I mean, that would certainly help. That's a good point. I mean, if they were to show up against Georgia and play really well or even shock them and beat them, I mean, nobody's going to predict that, obviously. I'm not predicting that. Nobody predicts those kinds of wins, really. But, yeah, it would, I think it would help. There's going to be a lot of eyes on that game, so it could help. There's a lot of people in that state. Cole Eady, hey, Cole, says, hey, Trey, you're doing a great job. God bless you, brother. Keep up the good work, and God bless the hogs. Appreciate you, Cole. All right, let's turn to questions here on Facebook Live. Donnie A. Butt says, go Razorbacks, beat the Bulldogs. Aaron Stallings says, good afternoon, Trey Biddy. Warren, Arkansas is live all up in this joint, representing Traylon Burks in 16 and Marcus Miller, 90, and the whole Razorback Nation. Appreciate you, Aaron. Nathan Espinosa says, good morning, Trey. You think this coaching staff is ahead of where the last staff was during their first year? I think so. I think they've got better talent overall, first of all. I, again, I'll say this. Chad Morris, his staff did a good job recruiting, largely thanks to Justin Stepp, Barry Lunny, Jeff Trailer. You know, those guys all, all really did a good job. Um, so, yeah, they, I think they did a good job recruiting. Those guys are a year older now. I think you've got some other guys that were, you know, kind of younger that are, that are a little bit older. Plus, you've got the grad transfers, who I think are a nice addition. You know, just watching Chad's first practice versus – well, I mean, let's just put it in terms of offensive install. I mean, the last we heard on offensive install, it was like 75%, 80%, and that's been over a week ago. And Arkansas never really got past 30% with Morris. Such an interesting way, the way they talked about it. I, I went back because I was watching Sam Pittman's introductory interview with the team, or not interview, but meeting with the team, and I went back and watched Chaz to see how that was. It was very, you know, me, I, um, Pittman, very we, you know, all that kind of stuff, you – that was that was a large difference in it, but just hearing Chad, you know, because he, he backtracks so much on, you know, they had to, they couldn't run the full offense, they couldn't go tempo like they wanted to, and all this stuff because they didn't want to risk putting their defense out of the field too early for, because they, I mean, they led the SEC probably in three and outs. I know they had the worst third down conversion rate. I mean, put the defense, you gotta you gotta milk the clock for your three plays so you don't get the defense out there. Just ridiculous. But you hear him in that interview or that uh, meeting, and he's like. I look at Arkansas and I see a team that's just like Clemson was six years ago now, eight and a half years ago, just six years ago. Basically talking like there's enough talent in that, in that room to do all the things that he wants to do. And that wasn't – I mean, first of all, that was not true. They, didn't, they weren't – I mean, Clemson had Taj Boyd. I mean, they had an NFL quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, tight end, offensive line player. I mean, they had at least one offensive lineman. They're tied in with the Mackey. I mean, they weren't even close to the same level of player. But, I mean, I, I think that they have better weapons right now. And a lot of that is because of players that they recruited. You know, having Mike Woods, Traylon Burks, um, Trey Knox, bringing in Felipe Franks. The offensive line hasn't been, like, l recruited at the level – where you'd like to see it. But they got some good players now. I mean, Myron Cunningham was a guy that picked Arkansas over OU. 
You know, I think not, Noah Gatlin has a real chance. Or all, I think we all like Ricky Stromberg. Bo Lemmer is a guy that was really well recruited, you know, albeit young. But I think they've got some guys. And Brady Latham, you know, you got a guy that maybe surprises some people like Latham. Stephen Wilson says he loves the show. Appreciate that, Stephen. Love you watching. MP Rich says Arkansas State and Kansas State was a good game. So looking forward to the Hogs. Yeah, I watched that one. Joe and Joe Dendy says, where are we at compared to last year? Does the team look bigger? They definitely look bigger. I mean, you can look at like a guy like Myron Cunningham who kind of looked like a basketball player last year, and he's a lot bigger. Uh, I definitely think they look bigger. Now, it's it's just hard to compare because you had spring football last uh, in you know, with Chad Morris in 2018 and then, and then, you know, fall camp. This has just been – I mean, what are they, like 16 practices through right now out of 25 or so? But they had all those meetings, you know. Which they had more meetings. They were just done virtually. So it's it's kind of hard to compare the two things. I will say the practices, from the time I'm able to view, they seem like they've got a better rhythm to them versus the first practices I watched under Chad Morris just seemed kind of chaotic to me. David L. Priest says starting O-line prediction. I think I gave that. That's 38 minutes ago on that question, but I gave that to you. Ashton Smith says Army waxed ULM. And Louisiana Lafayette also beat – who did they beat? I read it earlier. Can't remember, but they won. David L. Priest says, what's up with pool missing practice? Any other linebackers missed practice recently? So, David, I, I, don't, I can't comment on anything like that. Um, the way things are working with the university – we're the only school in the SEC that's allowing reporters into practice, okay? And the handshake with that is since they're doing that, we can't report on players missing for any reason. So, because it, I mean, it puts them at a competitive disadvantage. So, I hope you understand, David. Normally, wouldn't want to be, you know, doing it like that, but that's, I mean, we're going to work with them just because they're letting us go into practice and observe. Other, the other option is observe nothing, <laughs> just not go into practice. So, Randall Files says, I'm more concerned about linebacker than I am at tight end this year. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I think there's obvious reason. You know, you're usually going to play one tight end and 11 personnel. Um, you're probably going to need two tight ends overall. Linebacker, you need at least two all the time. You need probably – four or five linebackers you can depend on. So, yeah, I think you have reason to be concerned about linebacker. I mean, you've got bumper pull there, but what if you didn't have bumper pull? I mean, guys get dinged up. They have to come out. You don't want to play your linebackers really more than like 70% of the snaps if you can get away with it. So, it's a concern. Levi Draper, we still don't know a whole lot about him yet. Maybe he'll be a guy that emerges. But right now, I mean, don't you shouldn't feel real good about linebacker. I mean, if, if you look at it overall, and I like Grant Morgan, what he brings to the table, he's still undersized. You know, you've got Bumper Pool, who's a stud for you. Um, you know, Hayden Henry has done some really good things. He's been inconsistent because he's been injured, something different like every year. Then, you know, is Levi Draper going to be good? You know, Deion Edwards is being talked about as a as a contributor also. Maybe he's the strong side guy when they do run a 4-3. They must be running a 4 5 but I think, you know, they will run some 4-3. But he is a guy that hasn't contributed a whole lot for him up until now. So, you know, is it just like tar- slowly turn the switch and become a starter? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of concerns. Andrew Parker, haven't heard a whole lot about him. Zach Zymos, haven't heard a lot about him either. John Carr says, I don't know about Georgia, but I believe we could upset some teams. LSU is a rivalry. Texas a and is always close, and we've been competitive with Auburn years ago. But with this crazy year, I think games are up for grabs. Look for A-State upsetting K-State. Look at A-State. Yep. K-State, that's who they upset. Yeah, sorry. And I watched that. I mean, what am I thinking? I was talking about ULM. ULL. Who did ULL beat? Steven Shoup says we need to get ahead, get ahead in the game about to beating Georgia. Uh, let's see what else we got. David L. Priest says, I didn't read, realize Latham is so good. He really, They really like the way he understands leverage. Says he's very intelligent. He needs to continue to get bigger. How much of a chance do you give Arkansas to beat Georgia, says Donnie A. Butts? A one in – one in 15? I, I don't know. <laughs> not, not a great shot. Nobody predicts Arkansas – nobody predicts anybody to win those kind of games. 
How's KJ Jefferson's development looking? I mean, he looks good. I, like I said, you know, he, he has spent the last two years reworking his throwing motion, but I think that he could probably help them in certain situations, you know, where they maybe need a running quarterback. Rusty Hot Settler said, will there be fans at the game? Yeah, there will be fans. I think they're somewhere around the neighborhood of like 20,000. That's what we're expecting now. The Florida State game, I watched that, um, Florida State, Georgia Tech. It looked like it looked like it was just a poorly attended game, you know? I mean, there was there was a good number of fans there, I thought, for at least the way it looked on TV. I've seen other games where there's just nobody. Steven Shoup says, we will play hard for Sam Pittman. They did. Chad Morris was a joke. In Arkansas, I'm glad he's gone. The players didn't like him. Yeah, I agree with that. Players didn't like him. Shope says we'll, they'll win by three points in Georgia. Okay. Definitely played with heart with Lenny as interim coach. I think I agree with that. They absolutely did. Look at the Missouri game. David L. Priest says, what's up with Chambly? I mean, he's been heavily recruited. Sprained his MCL. Strained his MCL or sprained it. Can't remember what Danny said. All right. I know there are some freshmen to play this year on offensive line and defense this year. A lot of comments. Does Arkansas have the personnel to run Bryles' high-tempo spread offense? He is known to run. Do you think it will, he, will mod, he will modify it for us this season? I mean, you're always going to modify a little bit to your personnel, but I think they do have the personnel. It's just do they have the offensive line to protect. But they've got the receivers. they got the running back. They've got the quarterback. They need to stay healthy. Will the offensive line take a big step forward? I think they will take a step forward. How big will it be is the question. What about a shout-out to A-State? We've done that. A-State, congratulations on the win. Absolutely. A lot of questions about bumper. Before you sign off, would you mind giving a basketball recruiting update for the class of 21 and 22? I love the show. I'll say this, Chris Bacon. I'll have um, Curtis Wilkerson on Thursday, and we'll take a deep dive into basketball. Curtis went and watched uh, uh, some – summer hoop stuff uh, this weekend. So he's got a lot of stuff and there's plenty of stuff on the site as well. So we'll get to that, but he's our hoops guy. Michael Wilma says who was the top choice when they hired Brett Bielema. Um, I don't know if they ever like had, this is the top choice, but you know, Mike Gundy was being mentioned. Uh, a lot of people not, may not know Bo Pelini was also in the mix. Uh, I think with Bo, what really hurt him was losing that game to Bielema. I mean, they just got slaughtered in the Big Ten game, in the Big Ten title game. Um, so I think Bielema was probably, I mean, I don't know if he was like the number one, you know, but he was, if, there were, if he wasn't one, he was 1A or 1B, probably. I mean, Bielema was a big time. Bielema was reviewed as the biggest hire in the offseason, the best hire that anybody had made, whether he worked out or not. That's how he was viewed nationally. I mean, what he did at, in, at Wisconsin was was really solid. Three Rose Bowls. There's word that many Arkansas players are out with COVID. Any merit to this? I would say there's probably merit to that. Again, I can't comment on any specific thing, but it's happening all over the country. Trey, how much more enjoyable is it to do a question and answer with this coaching staff? To me, they all just sound more confident. And that they say rarely dance. I'll say this: like they don't dance around. Like if they can't say something, they'll say they can't say something. Instead of Chad, would just like I don't know. It came off very poorly. I don't think he realized how poorly he came off in press conferences and how frustrating it was for people. Um, but yeah, I mean, the difference obviously is having a press conference sitting in front of someone talking to them. I liked it because I would usually get more questions in. Versus now, it's just kind of like we go around in a circle, you know, and everybody gets their opportunity to ask questions. Shirley says, what about Devin Bush? I think he's probably running with the second group. Iowa State, that's who they beat. Who Iowa State was number 23. Thank you, Randy Baker. Louisiana Lafayette beat Iowa State. A lot of questions. A lot of people ask. Scott Hickman, Daryl Henry, I appreciate you all chiming in with the answer. Taylor Schau says, does Bryles have any games as an OC against an SEC defense? How many? How do you expect he'll adjust to defensive speed? I mean, I'd have to go back and look. I'm sure they've played SEC teams at Baylor at some point. I would have to go back and look at that. Marquand D. Sorrell says, how's Malik Hornsby? 
He's looking good from what I've seen. I mean, I don't – I think that maybe he could play possibly in some situations because he got more speed than any other quarterback on the roster. But uh, – and he throws the ball really well. Throws a nice, hard, tight spiral. I think he's got a future. It's just – it's not going to be this year most likely. Thank you, Jeremy Evans, for chiming in with that answer. Jason Jewell says, is there a real competitive advantage to Pittman being with Georgia and nobody having film on our personnel or scheme yet? I think so. I mean, I think so. He's you got to know the personnel there. I mean, Scott Fountain was there too. I mean, you you got a pretty good idea about who's there. I mean, so I think it's an advantage for sure. Is it enough of an advantage? Probably not, but it's an advantage. Art Whedon says, how much playing time will Marcus Henderson get this season? If he stays at tight end, then he could possibly get a decent amount of playing time. If he goes back to left tackle, probably not going to play a whole lot. Glenn Cross says, Glenn Gross says, keep the good work, Trey, and the guy, the guy. I appreciate that, Glenn. Well, I want to remind everybody, of course, sign up for our newsletter if you haven't done so already. Go to the middle of the page, enter your email address, hit sign up. You'll get an activation email, and we'll send – We'll send you an email pretty much every morning with all of our latest free content. Um, probably, again, send like eight articles, probably about six of those will be free articles and good content, not just not just fluff or whatever. It's actually, you know, good content that you'll like. And um, you can cancel that anytime, but I recommend you sign up. Here's the, here's the, the weird thing. This is why I'm promoting this right now. For some reason, we are, you know, top 10 in the, in the 24-7 Sports Network in subscriptions. We're top 10 in text alerts. That's another thing you should sign up for if you're not. Uh, we send breaking news text alert to anybody who wants them. Um, so we're top 10 in those two things. We're not even in the top 25 in our newsletter subscribers for some reason. I mean, we've got a lot, thousands upon thousands, but it's not even the top 25 in the network. So that bothers me. I like to be number one. I don't like to be just like top 10 and stuff. Like when we had that promotion network wide, I wanted to win it. We won it. I want to be number, I don't want to be top 10 in subscriptions either. I want to be number one. <laughs> I don't want to be outside of the top 25 for darn sure in the newsletters. So you're going to be glad you signed up. It's a good service. It really is. I, I, I send it out or somebody on our site sends it out. Um, you know, every day we make sure we put compelling stories in there. You're going to like it again, go to H A W G sports.com and sign up there. Also plenty of ways to watch and listen. Always tuning in on Facebook live, of course, for the live show. Be sure to follow the page. If you haven't done so already, throw us a thumbs up or like, or some kind of emoji interact with the video. Uh, it helps, uh, the algorithm and bumps our channel up also available on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell. So you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Um, Chime in with your questions there, your comments there. Also, share the video with somebody you think might like it. Uh, but, again, all that stuff helps boost our channel up. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us that five-star review if you don't mind. Uh, we'd love to have that for you, from you and anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite videos. We have gone over an hour now, so I'm starting to feel it a little bit in my voice with no commercial break or anything like that. Just talking steady, so it's kind of tough. All right, everybody, appreciate you. We'll be back with you guys Thursday when we will be just over a week out from the first game. So exciting times for Razorback football. All right, thanks, Danny West, for joining us. Thank you for your questions. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.